Good afternoon and welcome to the first webinar in our new Open Classroom Civil Designer Software webinar series. My name is Charles Scott and I'll shortly be joined by my colleague Andrew Cole. I trust that you're all well, safe and staying at home as requested by our various governments and the World Health Organization. What incredibly interesting or perhaps concerning times we're currently experiencing throughout the world. So why the new Open Class webinar series? Although many of you, our clients, have kept in touch with us, with us through our many existing support channels, we feel by not being able to regularly visit you, we're not able to technically support you as much as we would prefer to. Hence, the introduction of our new Open Classroom Civil Designer Software series. These short webinars will be held every week from Tuesday to Friday at 2 o'clock, covering the same modules each day, i.e. server terrain on Tuesdays, roads on Wednesdays, sewer and storm on Thursdays, and water on Fridays, with the option of later introducing Design Sent and CAD on Mondays. Obviously, there will be no cost involved. During the webinars, we will take questions via the provided for messenger service and will contact existing clients for further assistance after the webinars, should such requests be made. So without further delay, Andrew Cole, who many of you in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, Southern Cape, and Namibia well, well, no, well, no, well, please take it away with today's Survey and Terrain webinar. Thanks, Charles, and good day, everyone. In today's Survey and Terrain webinar, I'm going to be showing you some of the new features that have been added recently that you might not be aware of. So the first one I'm starting off with is the LiDAR Thinner, which is available in our CAD application. It's under the Tools pull-down menu, External Utilities. And you would select LiDAR Thinner. So this routine would be run if you have LiDAR files, laser survey files that are a little bit too large um, to work with, and you want to reduce the number of points. So you can see we cater for a couple of different file formats. In this case, uh, XYZ file. Have to select that LiDAR file, open it up. Okay, so this in this case we've got 3.4 3 million points, close to 3.5 million, and then the program would then, at a two meter grid interval, be able to reduce that amount to about 937,000 points. I'm going to try a five meter grid interval, see what the estimate is for that, about 150,000 points. I think I'll go with that for this particular exercise. So I just have to then run the process. And then the program is going to output a DAT file for me, which I can then import into my project. So I've got a project that I set up to use for this import. Um, just check my project settings. I just want to make sure that I have created a terrain file. And there I do have a DTM file, so that's fine. So it's just a matter of then a survey import, a normal ASCII import. We do have um, low down the normal LiDAR import if you were bringing a LiDAR file in, but this is reduced um, ASCII file, so just a, a DAT file. Just have to find that file, just the file type is a data file. And then just to check where I saved it, I think it's here on the desktop. There we go. You can see it's a DAT file. And then just your normal ASCII import dialog, you would set what the delimiter is, uh, apply constants if needed. Um, I'm not going to apply a constant, but I need to put in my column headings. So just X, Y, and Z, as it looks like in this case, based on the negative Y, and then just finish. And there we have a nice thinned out LiDAR survey. Okay, for the next feature, I'm going to look at the creation of a DTM from a drawing with 3D polylines with uh, contour lines um, drawn on it. So I'm just taking our normal um, 
Seven Train training ISMO project and I'm exporting the contours as 3D um, contours or CAD entities. So I've just published that um, layout with the contours in it. And then I'm just going to open up that published drawing. Okay, we can maybe just check if I select one of the lines just to make sure that they are now polylines, yes, with the correct elevation. Okay, I'll just check another one just to see if it is falling in that direction. Yes, you can see that's a bit of a moor lower area down there. Okay, and then I'm just going to create a project um, out of this published drawing. So I'm checking the terrain box and just putting in a name for my DTM file. So polyline to DTM. I'm creating that terrain file and just setting the correct allo band to 27 in this case. Okay. This um, polyline to DTM function was available in the terrain application under the model pull down menu, but yeah, I'm going to run it from the file import menu. Um, you can see over there, convert drawing entities, selected polylines. So I've pre-selected one of the polylines. So we're selecting to hide the DTM points from the polylines themselves, the 3D polylines. And then the method over here, you'll see um, there's two new options, bend points for contours and for detail. Actually, it's three options now. Um, I'm running it with the bend points only which then puts in a DTM point on every polyline vertex point. So nothing on the straight sections. It's purely on every bend point, vertex point of your 3D polyline. Okay, so I'm going to run the function again and use the for contour method this time. So I've selected another 3D polyline. And in this case, I want to specify the four contours method and then also set the spacing between your points, the maximum spacing between your DCM points. Okay, so this is thinning out the number of points at those sharp corners along your polyline. So less inserted points, uh, specifically when the, the change in direction or deviation is less than 10 degrees, then it won't insert multiple vertices at, at the bend points. And then if I run the third method, um, the four detail method, you'll see that this um, is a combination of the, the previous two. So it's going to give you all the vertices points, as well as that um, spacing of DTM points along the straight sections. So it's uh, meant for surveyed detail, so you got some additional information at all the points as well as along the, the straight sections. Okay, so now I want to delete using the batch delete. I'm going to delete all these points that we've just created. There's a new single surface option in the selection options. So I'm going to select surface 1 and OK to delete all those points. Then I want to select all the 3D polylines and create DTM points for the whole um, site of ours. So in this case, I've selected everything. I'm using that import convert drawing entities, selected polylines. And I'm just going to use the for contours option. So a bit of thinning out at a 20 meter interval. Okay. And there it should be done. I can just deselect. If I go to my display settings, just switch the text a bit smaller, the text height. You can zoom in and you'll see all those points have been created for all the 3D polylines. So not so much along the uh, vertices or we've used that 20 meter spacing and then a bit of thinning on the vertices. Okay, so I'm going to switch off the heights and then change to the terrain application so that we can triangulate this 
model now. So we've got all the DCM points. I'm going to triangulate with a standard triangulation at 50 meters just to be safe. And then I think let's just validate that. So model validate our surface one and there is an error. So not to be alarmed, we do have that new remove invalid lines function. So I'm going to run that now model remove invalid lines and that would remove all the crossing lines um, and sort out your triangulation for you. You can see it's using multiple cores and once it's done it should give us a result at the bottom there how many lines were removed. So a very useful function to sort out your triangulation issues. And then just to validate again, just to make sure all is sorted and always nice to get that line model scan successfully message. So remember to use the remove duplicates and then remove invalid lines if you're having issues with your triangulation. Okay, so I'm going to move on to this demo project of mine to show you the duplicate surface and height constant functionality. So in this case, we need two surfaces to calculate quantities, intermediate and hard material quantities. So I'm going to be in the survey module, I'm going to be using the editing functions. And I want to duplicate my surface one, my original ground surface. And I've created or named those surfaces already. Surface two is going to be my intermediate material. And then I'm going to just apply a height constant to that. So I wanted half a meter below my um, original ground. So I'm just applying the constant to the surface two intermediate and a negative 0 0.5. And I'm adding and then OK and OK. All right, and then I also want to duplicate um, my surface 2 again to surface 3, which is going to be my hard material for my excavation volumes. OK, so I've duplicated it. And then once again, just applying a height constant uh, clear the previous selection and using that single surface selection for surface 3 and once again just half a meter just um, to show you how it works in this case um, below the previous surface. Okay, so I've got original ground half a meter below that I've got intermediate and then a full duplicated surface again uh, half a meter below that. If you look at the numbers, you can see they all now 1, 5, 3, 4 for surface 1, 2, and 3. And then just to have a quick look in the, in the render view to visually see those three surfaces, I'm just going to go render view and then zoom into that corner, <coughs> in the one corner, so we can see the three surfaces. Those are the triangulation lines. And then maybe just to also see the actual height, the text height, um, I just have to restart um, the render view. So just escape out of the render view and then just reinvoke the render view again. So you can see the actual elevations. So that's 54.87 and then it's half a meter below that 0.37 for the intermediate and then 53.87 for the hard material. So that would sort me for my excavation quantities. Okay, and then in the display settings, there is now an option if you're in the surfaces tab. Um, if you right click over here by the surface names, there is an option now to save your surface names and the pens for the various surfaces. So you can then load and reuse these in, in other projects. So if you've got a standard set of surfaces that you'd like to reuse. Okay, and then the final thing I'd like to show you today is the 
new interpolate or group interpolate function. So we previously had uh, interpolation inside your DTM, but these are four points outside your DTM. So I'm just inserting multiple points um, on surface one. And this would be if you need to add some additional points outside uh, of your current triangulated portion of, of the network. Okay, so you can see they've all been inserted with a zero elevation. And then I'm going to run this model interpolate point, and it's a group of points, so multiple points. I just have to clear those previous points, select. I'm going to use the polygon method to select, so just clicking all around the perimeter. And then right click, finish, right click, quit. So 10 points selected, and then it's going to ask for three points uh, from which to interpolate. So three points on a plane to then interpolate and extrapolate those new elevations. Okay, and then to add your triangulation to this new section, we can use IntelliLines. Um, we want to keep all the existing break lines and our new triangulation lines we're adding as break lines. And then we can now uh, tweak those lines if necessary with the normal model editing lines functions. Okay, and that's all I've got for you today. Until next time, back to you, Charles. Thank you, Andrew. That was fantastic. And thank you to all who attended today's webinar. See you tomorrow at 2 o'clock for the Rhodes webinar. And please feel free to download a work from home version of Civil Designer if required. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.